the book of Romans, chapter 6. Amen. I want you to pay close attention to this word because I believe this is going to change your life and your walk with God. Amen. Amen. All kidding aside, I believe that if you get this word, your walk with God will be totally different. Amen. Amen. I say totally different. All right, so Romans chapter 6, beginning at verse number 1. I'm going to go from 1 to verse number 10. I'm going to do this in series because this is so powerful and it's so power-packed that I can't say it all in one say. Amen. Amen. And I want to throw this in right quick. Uh, my wife will put in a challenge for the prayer. But I want to put a challenge out there for those of you that bring the most people. I got something for you. Amen. Amen. Uh, I can't hear you. Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. It may be some money. Maybe some gas. <laughs> Maybe a nice dinner. Maybe a night in a hotel. You by yourself. <laughs> or by you and your husband. Or wives. All that up in there that other folk. No, no, no. Amen? Amen. But I want you to invite somebody because we endeavor to reach people. Amen. Amen. We want to reach them and tell them what thus saith the Lord. All right, listen to the word of the Lord. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? <clears throat> know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Are y'all with me? Yes. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free, freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. Our final scripture. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for this day again. Thank you for this time. I thank you for these that are here and sit before me. Spirit of the living God, have your way. Speak to us in a way that we've never heard you speak. I pray that you would touch the heart, the hardened heart, the mind that just can't seem to understand what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. I pray right now, God, that you would make it clear, perfectly clear, what you did on the cross. In Jesus' name I pray, and I thank you for what you're about to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can I get somebody to say amen? Amen. amen? All right. Listen to me. I want to really speak this to you because I know of a certainty that this is very, very important. So many people go to church and don't even know why they go. Some do because they go out of tradition. They go because 
Somebody asks them to go. They go just to be gone. They want to show off their new outfit, <laughs> new hairdo. Some come just for their birthday. <laughs> I said some, not all. <laughs> yeah. oh, and so, but I must inform you that that this is a predicament that so many people are in. Listen, did I tell y'all what we're gonna talk about yet? I didn't. Know. All right, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> the power of sin is broken. The power of sin is broken. Would y'all say that with me? The power of sin is broken. Come on, say it like you mean it. The power of sin is broken. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I can hear my four-year-old real good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I got to inform you that it only worked for those who really believe. Do you hear me? Because sin is running rampant in the land. But you got to know as a believer that sin is broken off of your life. Do you hear me? Why is this important? Because we got so many people in church call themselves Christians. Yeah. But yet, they live in sin. They don't understand what it was that happened at the cross. They don't know. But for many of you that have really tried Jesus and find out that he's all right, and for those of you that, that try to go back and do things that you used to do and just don't feel right, <laughs> There's a sure bet that has, has been a change that came in your life. Do you hear me? Amen. Because I'm telling you, some things I used to do, I don't want to do it no more. Amen. Places I used to go, I don't even think about going no more. Amen. Why? Because the power of sin has been broken in my life. Amen. Now, let me be transparent to you. I know that when I first got saved, I didn't understand all this stuff. And so I was still doing my thing. Oh, Lord, y'all left me out here by myself. Y'all act like y'all, you know, y'all been saved, y'all been doing good, all just saved lives. But the truth of the matter is most of us are still doing some things that we ought not to be doing. Because we don't realize the work that Jesus put in for us to live a saved life. Is that all right? Okay. Now, I know that Satan does not want you nor myself to know or understand that sin is not to reign and rule over us when we become saints. Did y'all hear me? Yes. I said Satan don't want you to know that sin is not to reign and rule over your life. When you become a believer in Jesus, you cannot allow the enemy to tell you what to do. <laughs> you cannot listen to the devil because he ain't got nothing good to say. He knows how to fix up a lie and make it sound so good. Yeah. And he will trick you into doing things that you have no business doing. But you got to know that you know that you know that you say. And you got to tell the devil, look right in his face. No, devil. Ain't going to do it. And me. I don't care how fine he is, baby. <laughs> It don't matter. I don't care how good she looks, you got to tell the devil no. Okay, can I put it like this? Hell no. Tell hell no. Yeah. Mm, I like that, huh? But that's okay. That's okay. But let's get a little, little, little history before we get deep into the lesson. The book of Romans is considered or is called the Constitution of Christianity. 
the Christian manifesto, the cathedral of the Christian faith. That's why the book of Romans is very, very important that you read and study. Because this book is not like any book in the Bible. Amen? Amen. Because back in Paul's day, people came out of the world and they came into the church and they were still doing the same stuff that they were doing in the world. And so Paul takes time to write and tell them, no, nah, baby, you can't do that. Because God's grace has pulled you out of sin. And sin don't have power over you unless you let it happen. Amen. Amen. Now, you got to understand, most Christians back in that day or, or Jewish, they live by the law. Yeah. But the law was never designed by God to save them because they couldn't keep the law. Because if you broke one piece of the law, you broke the whole law. And so that's why Jesus came and said, I come to fulfill the law. And that's why you got to get in Jesus because he has already fixed it all for you. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So Paul is writing this letter. Uh -huh. Romans has always stood at the head of Paul's letters. And rightfully so. Since Acts ends with Paul's arrival in Rome, it is logical to have the epistle section of the New Testament begin with the apostle's letter to the Roman saints. Notice he didn't say to the Roman church. He said to the Roman saints. Not the ain'ts, but the saints. Y'all know that the Bible is really written for believers. Sinners can read it all day long. Quote it, talk about it, but it's not for them. It's for the believer. Why? Because there are instructions in the Bible that teach us how to live this life in this earth. Are y'all with me? Amen. Hallelujah. Say out to say amen, my son. Amen. Hallelujah. I got to know you're here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans is the most important book theological in the whole New Testament. Hallelujah. Historically, Romans is the most influential book in the Bible. Why? Because there was a man called Augustine who was converted through the reading of Romans. The Protestant Reformation was launched by Martin Luther. I don't know if you all have heard of these people. Augustine, Martin Luther. See, this is what happened when you go to Bible study. Uh, amen. amen. I said when you go to Bible study. Amen. You can get all this good information. <laughs> amen. amen. So we see that Augustine, we see that, 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 that Martin Luther, and then there's another man called John Wesley. All of these guys, were transformed by the book of Romans. Why? Because most people only believe in the law. But Paul was telling us, listen, it's not the law that saved you. It is the grace of God. And I come to ask somebody this morning, do you thank God for grace this morning? Hallelujah. Because God could have left you out there all alone. He could have let the devil just take you out. But his grace, God's unmerited, God's undeserved favor has been on your life. That's why we got to give God praise. We got to give God glory because grace is powerful. As a matter of fact, and I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, God's grace is more powerful than sin itself. Mm, Lord. Her mercy. I say God's grace is more powerful than sin itself. Now, there are countless others who have been transformed through reading this powerful epistle that God left on record for every believer to read and to know that we may really understand what has happened to us. You see, it's not about getting up, going to church, Bible study, because of tradition. It's not about us. 
It's not about what a lot of people believe. It's about God's grace mm -hmm. on your life. Mm -hmm. And his grace will destroy sin mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't understand why churches allow people to do whatever they want to do mm -hmm. in the house of God. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. We got these old broke wristed people do what they want to do. Hmm. Y'all know who they are. <laughs> Y'all looking at me like, why are you talking about that? <laughs> Amen, because we do. Okay. Okay. They stand up and, 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 and we have the audacity to let them lead God's people. That's wrong. Amen. They full of sin. Mm -hmm. And all they're going to do is spew it out on you. Well, and because the first thing you can say, well, if they, they, you know, if they, they can do it, they must be all right. Mm. Mm. Come on. Lord, I wish I was in the air. But I come to tell y'all this morning that the power of sin is broken. If you really believe Jesus Christ, do you hear me? Mm. All right, so let's talk about, let's talk about these things. I'm, I want to deal with verses one and two. Now, when you come to Jesus Christ, the very moment, that very second, and you believe in him truthfully, please hear me, truthfully, at that moment, God justifies you. He didn't make you right. He declared you right. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. No, why he declared you right? Because you put your trust in his son. Mm -hmm. Because his son is our righteousness. Yes, yes. His son fulfilled all the law. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't go to God any other way. It is only through Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't care what Oprah says. I don't care what any celebrity says. There is only one way to go. And it's through Jesus. Jesus has the power yes. Yes. to eliminate sin from reigning and ruling in your life. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's why we need it. You talk about all these other religious folk. I don't care about them because they can't help me. They can't fix me. They can't change me. They can't do any of this. But Jesus can. And he will. And so the believer is justified. You put your faith in him and God looks at you and he blesses you. He recognizes you as one of his own sons now. Is that all right? Yeah. I'm telling you, you've got to understand this because when you really understand this, it's going to help you to walk away from sin. Yes. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Listen, the believer is to live a holy life mm -hmm. and become a servant of righteousness. Yes. I'm talking about genuine believers. I'm not talking about these people that say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. A Christian. What is a Christian? They don't even know. They can't even tell you mm -hmm. what it is. But I'm talking about true believer. A genuinely saved person cannot abuse the mercy of God. He or she cannot walk in sin and walk with God at the same time. That's true. That's true. It's impossible. Yes, it is. Glory to God. And to do this is to tread upon the mercy of God and make a mockery of his grace. Yes. My Lord, have mercy. Y'all know. Come on. I'm, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. You act as if God gave you a license to sin. Mm. Come on. Now watch this. If. Now. <laughs> all right. Y'all work with me, okay? Now, this is the devil. <laughs> this is God. Y'all work with me. This, 
who's trying to destroy you and take you and your family out. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the sin is broken. The power of sin is broken. If you get in Christ. That's it. All right, I got a little bit more to go. Amen. I'm glad y'all here because, see, now I feel like I can preach for another two hours. <laughs> but I'm not going to do y'all like that. But I'm going to do this right here. How many of y'all give me five more minutes? Just raise your hand. Five, okay, so five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty. Don't put your hand down. <laughs> so at least I got another hour. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. I think I'll be able to get all this out. Okay. Now listen. Glory to God. The way for a man or a woman to break the habit of sin is for him or her to know the glorious position that you are in. I said you got to know the position that you're in in Christ. Yes. Yes. The day you said I do to Jesus, mm -hmm. <laughs> God put you in a position mm -hmm. with his son. Yes. And you got to understand, Jesus never sinned. Mm -mm. Jesus never did any wrong. Mm -hmm. But I have. So how can God do it? God can do it. Because he's both just and justified. Yes. God declares you to be righteous as soon as you put your faith in his son. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right there at the altar, you know that day you was crying and snotting and about to fall out and all that? That day, that moment that, moment. that you believe Jesus, yes. God in his infinite wisdom and power yes. translated you yes. into the kingdom yes. of his dear son. Yes, he did. And with that in mind, listen, you can't be doing things that are contrary to what God mm -hmm. would have you to do. Mm -hmm. Because now you have violated yourself. Mm -hmm. You have violated his law because God is holy, simply meaning that he is separated from the power, the practice, and the presence of sin. Mm -hmm. Y'all wish y'all hear me. Please hear me. Don't walk out of this room and tell me you don't understand it because I'm telling you today, you got to have this. It's going to make you walk better before God, knowing that you are in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not in the world, but in Jesus. Yes, yeah. yes. Now listen. We can't stop sin. We can't, sometimes we make mistakes. We yes. fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we do things that we should do. Sometimes. But we don't practice that. It's not something that we do every single day. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so we don't live in sin. Mm -hmm. We live around it. Mm. Oh, y'all, please, please, please understand. It's all around us. Every day, everywhere you go, there's sin around us because the devil is the prince of the air. And so he likes dropping stuff in your mind. He wants to drop stuff that you like to do. Oh, y'all know how y'all used to. Misha, you know what I'm talking about, you know what? At your wedding, how y'all was, you know? You know, huh? Yo, you and John John was out there, y'all act like y'all were married or something. You know, I mean, me, she was getting drunk. I said, Lord, have mercy. Look, I ain't gonna talk about faith. faith. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I ain't gonna talk about faith. faith. Well, I love Faith Faith. Amen. She ain't held just one. Lord, have mercy. Help us today. 
<laughs> Look. Listen, 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 listen. I know, I know sin is pleasurable. I know the Bible says it is. And, and, and the enemy sets us up for failure in the end. Amen. We enjoy life, but we've got to come to the place to where we want to give all of that up and spend eternity with God. Let me ask you something. Is any of this that we know or that we do worth dying and going to hell over? Is any of it? I mean, any. Come on. Think about it. Is she worth cutting? Is she worth you pulling out your nine millimeter? Is he worth it? You ain't got to throw hot grits on that brother. Let him go. Is it worth it, y'all? I mean, a can of beer. And not just one. Three or more. <laughs> Amen. I'm serious. Is it worth it? Is, is the Hennessy, is, is, is all of this stuff that we do, is it worth it, y'all? You can lose your life and, 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 and never get it back because, because I wanted to party. I wanted to get that because, because your flesh don't want God. It doesn't want to do what God will have you to do. And so you say, well, how do, I, how do we get through this, preacher? I'm telling you that the power of sin is broken. If you believe it. And if you get in Jesus Christ, now everything ain't going to fall off of you in one day. It can, but it normally doesn't because God is taking you through a process of eliminating things that are detrimental to your life. Can I get a witness in here this morning? Hallelujah. Some of them old guys that you used to like and all that stuff, God going to have to clean you up. God have mercy. <laughs> y'all, y'all, I'm, okay, since y'all got me out here by myself, let me talk about myself. Them old girls that I used to like, God had to clean me up. And he hooked me up with a real woman. I said real. Is this mic on? He had to clean me up so that I could have a real woman. Can, can I get a witness in here? Lord, have mercy, y'all. Amen. These old habits that I learned in the street, he had to take them away from. But they all didn't fall off overnight. But I kept on striving. Fell down sometime. But I got back up. Fell down again. <laughs> but I got back up. And then I tripped, fell on the back of my head, and got back up. Do y'all follow me? Y'all understand? It's a process. And, and the more that I walk with him, y'all, the more he started to cut things off. Now, don't mess with me. I still... Still a little, you know, I really am because I'm related to all y'all. So I know I ain't by myself. I know y'all a little cuckoo too. But anyway, there are some things that God is still working on me with. <laughs> am I by myself? I know. Okay, all right. I know God is still working on you with some stuff. Amen. Because I know Shantae like to fight. She do. And, and, and when I talk to her sometimes, she act like she's going to fight me. I'm like, cuz, calm down, baby. No, no, no. You know she talk fast. And Lord Jesus. And I'll be like, ooh, ooh, Shantae, calm down, baby. Calm down. It's going to be all right. Now, Sherry is the total opposite. Ain't she? Sherry is so quiet. Nonchalant. She ain't going to hit you unless she have to. You feel me? 
but, but, but some of these things that we all have, God has a way of taking them off of us. Amen? Because I want you to know that the power of sin is broken off of your life if you let Jesus do it. Now, if you could have fixed it, you would have fixed it a long time ago. None of us can fix ourselves. I don't care what you say. You can go and lose 55 pounds if you want to. 90 days later, you'd be 65 pounds heavier. You can't fix yourself. You got to work and ask the Lord to help you and maintain you. Amen. Don't you know there's still some fine women out there since I got saved? There's oh, still drugs roaming the streets since I got saved. You think I don't sniff marijuana when I'm going? So, you think that, man, there's some people be so drunk at work I can smell liquor way around the cone. And it don't smell bad. Be like, ooh, boy, you've been drinking that gin all night. You? you so good, you know what you've been drinking. Drinking that Boone's form, huh? Mad dog and all this stuff. And the enemy knows where you've been. He knows what you'd like. He knows what's going to gravitate to you, what you, what you like. He never comes with anything that does not get your attention. Never. You like them tall, dark, and handsome? Here they come. You like them short and beautiful like me? Here they come. They coming. I promise you. Ask her. Ask her. She, when she saw me, she went, ooh. Uh, anyway, so, so, so the enemy knows what you're up against. But so does God. That's why you got to get in Jesus so that you can make the right decision. Amen. Now, ain't no doubt in my mind that Eric and Betty Boo were made for each other. Ain't no doubt in my mind. Because, because what I see from Eric is that he is a good man. Amen. And we don't have very many good men no more. I'm just using him for an example. I know all my other little young cousins, they good because, you know, we family. You know what I'm saying? But I, 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 love, I love Eric and Betty Boo because they're young. They're striving. And they're doing well. And you can't do that without God. Do you hear me? You can't do it without God. Now, a lot of youngsters, they start out good. But they end up bad. Because God has not been in their life. God has not had a place with them. And so you got to have God at all times. Because Betty Boo get on his nerve. And he get on her nerves. And you're going to need the Lord to step in. Oh, somebody said amen. amen. Me and my wife, we did 27 years. And if you think every day was hunkadory, baby, you got another thing coming. I, I ain't going to talk about how she hit me. Well, I ain't going to say them. I'm not going to say it, baby. I'm sorry. I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. But, pop, woo! I'm good now. Though. You know, after a few licks, man, you wake up, you know? Now listen, the believer is to know his real position in Christ. Knowledge of his position will help keep